Yo, what's up with y'all, man? I hope you're doing good. If you're new and you're a fan of the NBA, subscribe to this channel. So, let's get straight into it. Situations. If you've been a consistent viewer and supporter of mine, you'd know that situation and opportunity is something that I value over most things. When it comes to evaluating and trying to determine just how good a player can be now, now and also going into the future. I'm talking five, ten years down the road. I personally believe that no matter how talented you are, if your opportunity isn't there, for one, you're literally not going to go anywhere with your career. And secondly, the atmosphere of that organization, the mindset, the situation that that young player is walking into, that is important. And it's going to play a huge part in what players get out of their career. Two perfect examples are the two are debatable best young shooting guards in the NBA today, Donovan Mitchell and Devin Booker. Both players are extremely young, extremely talented, and are the best players on their team. The one thing that obviously separates the two is their situation. d was the best player these last two years on that Utah team. A Utah team that made the playoffs. He was the leader, the top scorer. He was basically the life of that team. Meanwhile, in Phoenix, bro, I don't even know if there was a life over there, period. Things have been extremely dead in Phoenix for years now. If you want to find out why and just find out all the little ticky-tack details, I made a video on that a while ago. Check it out. But anyways, things have been dead in Phoenix, and that's to no fault of Devin Book. He literally can't do nothing about it, but improve his game. Donovan Mitchell literally did nothing to be put in this magnificent situation in Utah. It's just something that happens, you know. In Utah, it was an easy plug and play. Meanwhile, in Phoenix, yeah, it's plug, but it ain't no real play over there. These two guys are great, but the only reason why you may think one of them has the edge over the other is ultimately the point of this entire video. There's situations. Phoenix consistently sucks. And meanwhile, Utah is consistently good. Evan Booker's name is attached to that disgrace of an organization. Meanwhile, Donovan Mitchell's name is attached to Utah, a respectable team. Even though D. Mitch has been in the league for only two full seasons, compared to D. Book's four, Donovan Mitchell has seen a lot more success. So now that you have a good idea of where I'm coming from and what type of energy I'm exerting to you, let's hop into the video. But right before we hop into it, I got a special message for you really to involving my clothing store evolve if you want a great chance of winning nba 2k24 the complete free all you have to do is follow that ig page right there and while you're at it you know go ahead and follow me on the gram too now i'm gonna need you to listen to these instructions right here listen to them carefully go ahead on this account right here like every single picture that you see and after you like every single picture that you see i need you to comment under this post because this post is where your name is going to be entered in the draw once you follow that account and my personal account and like all the pictures and comment under that picture right there that specific picture remember boom you're literally in the giveaway for a chance to win nba 2k20 for whatever console you're on playstation gay box i mean Xbox, Wii U, people still play Wii U, that's incredibly tough. PC, look, whatever you got, I'll get it for you. Now, I remind you, I'm not Bill Gates, but I like to give back to you guys here and there just to show you that I really actually mess with y'all. I mess with all of you because you mess with me. And I gotta show you the same energy back. That's just how it works. I feed off of energy. So besides that, also, it's Labor Day weekend. Here's a 25% discount code that'll last up until Tuesday, or Wednesday, actually, I believe. Bro, look how good I look in this. You can't lie, I look good right now. Go ahead and you you could look just as good as me right now if and only if you have that evolve on your body of course do your thing support one of your favorite creators on this content and also support your swag because i know it probably needs some help The New Orleans Pelicans brought in Zion Williamson to something special. Prior to the AD trade, they didn't really have much to put around him. But after it, they built themselves a very respectable core. And after selecting Zion in the draft, they just sweetened up their territory even more. By trading down in the draft and acquiring Jackson Hayes, who's an athletic, mobile, lengthy big with the eighth pick. And in the middle of the draft, they scooped up one of the steals of that night, Nikhil Alexander Walk. Okay, so let's chit chat for a little bit. I remember a month before the draft, like when we got the NBA lottery order and found out that Zion was 100% gonna be a Pelican, that kind of rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And at a certain point in time, people just brought up the most random idea out of nowhere. One of the rarest and most disrespectful speculations I've seen in my life. Ideas were being thrown out there. This was on social media. This was probably on Undisputed or First Take or something like that. That Zion Williamson would stay a whole year in college again. 
just to avoid living in New Orleans. I don't know about you and how you New Orleans fans work, but if someone said that about my organization, I'd be ready to scrap. Are they, are they that bad? I know I'm not the only one who remembers that BS. New Orleans, shut up all that talk though, and I, I am proud of them for doing that. And since then, they've made nothing but brilliant moves, and now have a core of Zoe, Drew, Ingram, Jackson Hayes, Nikhil Alexander, Walker, and Josh Hart surrounding Zion. Now, common trait about these players is that none of them are really great shooters, and also none of them are solid bigs as of now. So what they did to fulfill those holes was go ahead and free agency and sign a top five shooter today in JJ Redick and a super solid big in Derek Favors to play the five. They're doing everything they possibly could as of now to right the wrongs of the past. And as of now, they're slowly but surely working their way up there. Now, the opportunity isn't too much for Zion to handle because he has some serious scores in Drew and Big Body Ingram to assist him. But at the same time, as you all know, in the back of everyone's mind, Zion has to be the man if they really want to go big place and eventually do big things. This new wave that he's a part of in New Orleans easily puts him in one of the best situations in the NBA as a rookie. I believe that they have the talent now to be somewhat successful as an organization and the pieces to regroup and make a few moves if guys like Ingram are really meshing well with Zion on the court. The trust is there. I trust them for now with the career of Zion Williams. Sadly though, I, I, I just can't say the same about his ex-teammate RJ Barrett in the New York Knicks. Not because of RJ Barrett. I trust that man, okay? Don't get it twisted. But uh, he... I don't trust the Knicks. Why don't I trust them? Because the Knicks are the Knicks. They're one of the least trustworthy organizations in the world. There's so many questionable, no countless moves that I can't even begin to fathom. Everything is just so discombobulated in that organization. They actually have good young talent around RJ. They have guys like Mitch Robinson, who's going to be the starter on that team for years to come. Julius Randle, he's a beast waiting to feast. Alonzo Trier, 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 Trier. I, I still don't know how to say that man's name. Excuse me. But that dude is cool. Cool. And also, Dennis Smith Jr. is, of course, cool, too. Oh, and uh, Kevin Knox, he still has potential. And I didn't even mention Frank Nelikina. I'd rather not do that. See, this team has a lot of young guys to roll with him in the future. But all these young guys don't necessarily fit all on the court at the same time as RJ. Maybe one or two of them, but all of them? I don't really know, coach. You're asking for too much. Just like the New Orleans Pelicans, spacing is almost non-existent in their starting lineup, probably. But the difference is that I trust New Orleans to fix that and to figure it out and make the necessary adjustments. I don't trust the New York Knicks to do the same thing, though. Because they are the Knicks, I shouldn't have to say much more about that. Now, they actually do have shooters in Marcus Morris, Wayne Ellington, and also Bobby Portis, too. But all three of those players that I just listed seem like they'll get moved. They're really movable pieces in the middle of the season. And teams are gonna call in about that and the Knicks, you know, and the Knicks are gonna give them away for second rounders and maybe a first, who knows. Now RJ does have help and a good young core to grow with, but the pieces are just not right, not yet at least, unless someone like Dennis Smith Jr. or Kevin Knox makes an insane improvement. Now I wouldn't necessarily say that RJ is a bad situation, he's not in a great one, but he's not on a bad one either. Now, you know who is in a bad one? That boy, Rui Hachimura. Lord have mercy. Literally any rookie entering whatever the hell is going on over there is in for a headache, a massive one. Because it doesn't seem like they have a direction whatsoever and it feels like they're just in a whatever type state. They haven't shown any true reassuring signs of anything whatsoever. Now this kind of sucks because Rui Hachimura got picked by them. Man, he's going to be great. He has so much potential as a four in this league, but the situation he's going to be introduced to isn't really appealing or appetizing as well. Like... Bro, just look at this interview clip right here that I saw like a month ago or something like that. Just look at it. What he was asked to do, I think that'll be almost something that our coaches will be able to install. And the confidence that he has, I think he can shoot the three, right? He told me he can shoot the three. How would you feel if you were Roy Hachimura? Me, I feel disrespected. And I'd be like, what the hell, man? I'm ready to quit right now. Trade me. <laughs> Not really, but still, like, it's... This is unprofessional. You see, most young players in the draft got a squad to roll with. Zion got Zoe Ingram in the game. RJ Barrett has Mitchell Robinson, Kevin Knox, and Dennis Smith Jr. Darius Garland has Jetty and Sexton to lean on. And Cameron Reddish has Trang and John Collins. What about our boy Roy, though? Please don't tell me that he's gonna be all alone. He's all alone! And he doesn't have any reassuring core dudes to roll with in the future. Because the Wizards are still clinging on to Bradley Beal and are caught up in their feelings with him still. They're attached and they don't know how to let go. And Roy Hachimura is going to suffer from that. Their young core today surrounding Roy Hachimura is guys like Mo Wagner, Isaac Bonga, Troy Brown Jr., and Thomas Bryant. Ugh. 
Wow. I'm sorry, but Rui Hachimura is entering one of the most depressing situations as a rookie in the league. Okay, so you know what? I think it's time we switch things up and switch the energy, the flow of this video. We're gonna brighten the mood up by talking about the lit situation, the lituation that's going on in the Memphis Grizzlies organization. The Grizzlies have easily one of the most attractive young cores in the league. It seems like the new wave in the NBA is to have a new PG and a star studded big by their side. There's Luka and Porzingis, De'Aaron Fox and Marvin Bagley, Trey Young and John Collins, and now John Morant and JJJ. They're going to continue this trend. And to add on to the wave that's happening in Memphis, they have a lot of other nice players to assist Ja in his career. Brandon Clark was a summer league MVP, and I tried to tell some of y'all about him months ago, but you didn't want to listen, and look what he did in summer league. I told you so. Dude is a defensive stud and is a long time piece to have. He's a player who preaches on the court what they are all about, the grit and grind. It's crazy because just a few months ago, Memphis was literally one of the most driest basketball cities in the league, and now they got the juice. Jonas Valanciunas, Bruno Caboclo, Dylan Brooks, JJJ, and Brandon Clark. And now Ja is going to be asked to put in work, don't get it twisted, but the energy just like Zion that he's going to be asked to exert isn't backbreaking at all. Because of the well-crafted roster around him, Ja is easily in one of the best places to be as a rookie. He just needs to put the keys in the ignition and get things rolling. Tyler Hero is also in a newly relit situation in Miami. Now the only slight issue that I have with him being there is obviously the amount of opportunity that he's gonna get there. Instead of going for a potential 15 and 4 in his rookie year, he's probably gonna settle for 9 and 2 instead because of the presence of Jimmy Butler. And that's honestly the way things should be as of now. But when the time comes and Jimmy Butler gets old as dirt, Tyler Hero will be ready and probably battle tested as well because Miami is trying to contend as of now. And Tyler is gonna get his playoff reps in hella early compared to his other peers. And he also has good talent around him too to roll with in the future in Bam Adebayo and Justice Winslow. Tyler's future in Miami is set. Everything is bound to just go really well. I can't say the same for that man Romeo Langford though. Like I'm sure he can be a good player and all that, but the situation in Boston is just really, really weird. Considering that his role will be minimal, I highly doubt that he'll get much opportunity at all, if any. He is on a good team, a team that has good culture and all that, but the fit isn't necessarily there at all. I just don't see his place on this team long term. His opportunity there is minimal and the situation is iffy too. And as we all know from the beginning of the video, those are two huge factors to me. Now this next player that I'm about to mention has similar issues, but not really. Not really because his spot on the team isn't questioned at all. Cam Reddish could easily slide his way into a hopeful star in this league. No pressure at all should be on him. Instead of him, it's going to be on guys like Trey Young and John Collins. This organization, the players, the coaches, and the atmosphere is just right for him. So I just gave you guys a few rookies who are in the best and worst situations entering the NBA in their rookie year. Now outside of opportunity, opportunity is the most important thing, remember that kids. Outside of opportunity, this is the most important component to one's success. For some like Zon Williamson and John Moran, they are bound to take the hell off. But for others like Roy Hachimura and maybe RJ Barrett, they may have some trouble getting the ball rolling. And if some do, hopefully this video will let you know why. This is the end of the video though, man, but right before you leave, make sure you go ahead and follow that Evolve page, like every single picture, and leave a comment on this post right here so you can be entered in the draw. And also, don't forget, there's a 25% discount code called Lituation. You get shirts like this. This is one of my favorites. Loki, this might be my favorite. I change my mind every single video. Don't mind me, but just know all of them are heat. And this one specifically is one of my faves, so, if you like it, go ahead, copy one. But um, yeah, man, this is the end of the video. I really, really do appreciate you for coming over here on my channel and watching me talk about basketball once again. I really do appreciate you and understand how dope that is to me. Still, sell soccer. But yeah, man, I appreciate you. Make sure you go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share this video, legit. Share this video with every single one of your friends, not every single one of them, but at least show one, you know, share the love, share the vibe, and share this energy. Don't be greedy. But um, yeah, man, uh, do that, like, share, comment, all this other stuff, and also, most importantly, more important than all of that, make sure that you make the day great. But until then, um, I'll get right with you. No way, no way, when I couldn't get a play, no hope, I ain't have a place to stay, I got the work, made it sir, free the way, so my girl who'd have a thought.